Hello, and welcome back to Russ Plays Games. My name is Russ, and as you can see, we are sitting in front of my paint station. Um, one thing I forgot to do yesterday was, um, this is the shield um, that goes onto the Reptus Warrior. I forgot to paint it, so I'll end up, I'll base coat it later, and I'll, I'll paint it up, and um, I'll kind of go through some of the process. But basically what you're supposed to do is when you get done with it, you're supposed to attach it, like, right, like, you know, something like that onto the front of the guy. And then, you know, it's, it's, he's got this little shield, so you're supposed to hook it up like that. It's actually got, like, a little, um, it's actually got, like, some little tabs on the back where you're supposed to kind of stick it in. So, um, just something to do if you don't want to do it you don't have to do it either um but it's just something to do so i know in the last episode i went on a complete rant and i'm sorry about that um like i said in the video my brain tends to fixate and i just kind of go like off the rails with it okay and i have to get it i have to get it off my mind to be able to get rid of it so um what I wanted to show you was, um, I have, so this is the Lord Relictor, Ionis Krypton, okay? He's part of the Thunder and Blood set. So the two characters that you get, the two heroes that you get in this set are Ionis Krypton, the Lord Relictor, okay? And Vec, the Bloodstoker, okay? You also get a Korgorath, which is like a, a demon of corn. Um, I don't have him right here, but he's a big, he's a big guy. And he's, he's like a friend of Vec, okay? So they tend to kind of like move around together and do things together, okay? So I just kind of wanted to show off the Stormcast, you know, like they're basically the Space Marines of the Warhammer Age of Sigmar. <laughs> Um, experience. And these are the, um, the retributors, um, that are kind of the, no, not retributors. These are, uh, liberators. These are kind of the rank and file troop of, um, the Stormcast Eternal. Okay. And this is their, this is their symbols and, you know, kind of like a hammer, a sigmar kind of thing. Um, and then these are the retributors. <laughs> Um, and, and this is what I was talking about before. These are the retributors. These are the guys that have these big mauls, like they're big hammers. Okay. Cause they represent kind of Sigmar's judgment basically. Okay. Cause in the world of age of Sigmar, if anyone knows anything about Warhammer, Sigmar was a God King of the empire. He's the one that actually, he was born a man. And he went around and, like, united all of the tribes of the Empire together under one banner using a titular war hammer called Gal Maraz. And basically, the um, Celestin Prime, which is sort of the main sort of, like, hero of the Sterncast Eternals, carries that war hammer in Age of Sigma. Okay? And so these guys are sort of the... You know, that's why they're called retributors. Everything has to do with, because there was this age of chaos, age of chaos, um, before the age of Sigmar, okay? And chaos kind of took over, okay? These are the castigators, and that's why I'm saying they have a similar two-handed maul to the retributors, but what they... But they have, but it's like they're sharp, okay? They're not a regular hammer head. They're a different type of hammer, okay? And um, and you can see that the bases that, that Games Workshop made are a lot more um, detailed, okay? They are way more detailed than the original bases. And they're like molded plastic, okay? So like vacuum-formed, like molded plastic. Um, which, I mean, it's kind of cool. Um, 
these are the sequiturs which have the big crossbows. This is what I was talking about. They have the big crossbow. Okay. So they have like these big crossbow things. They almost look like a nerf, you know, kind of a crossbow, and they they you know shoot out these gigantic bolts. Um what I don't understand is they don't have any quivers. Where the where the hell are they getting these things from? <laughs> Unless that's like a barrel? I, I don't know. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, these have like really detailed bases and they're really cool looking. Um, and then this is the Griff Hound that you get. Okay. So in the box, um, like I said in the previous one, you get three of these guys and then you get a prime, which is their leader. Okay. That's it. He's just the leader of the troop. He's, he's basically like, um, the champion of a 40k tactical squad. Okay, he has no other business other than that. This guy was actually like a pet of the main hero of the Stormstrike box set. Okay, and I like painted him wrong because I I painted him and then I painted him a, a certain color and then I went back and like really doused him in. Um, in uh, shade, and then when I went back to paint him white, like, it didn't look good. <laughs> so he looks kind of crappy. The base looks good. I really like the base. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, we'll leave him over there for now. Um, this is a Glaive Wraith Stalker. Now, you get four of these in the box set, okay? Um, and you can kind of see, because they're they're ghostly you can kind of see that like parts of him are like going through um the the thing and i wanted to kind of highlight that like this ghost here where like part of him is going through the the gravestone he's got the same kind of thing going on okay and i painted up four of these guys and i put them in my necropolis as um wraith harvesters in my necropolis army okay because i mean again Who's going to know? Who's going to care? Right? And then the Myrnmorn Banshees, it turns out, I think you only get two Myrnmorn Banshees, not four. You get two. Okay? Um, so before I actually do that, I'll, I'll go back and change it um, because I'm editing the videos as of right now. So I'll change that. But basically, you get you get two of these. Okay? And they're, they're pretty cool looking. Um because what's what's interesting is is that because they're spirits, they're they're actual like if you can kind of see their bodice is um is uh um like hollow. Okay. And then their jaw is also like floating, like free floating. Um and so yeah, and it's like they their eye sockets are actually molded into the um, the cloth. Um, so I painted up one of these, and I'm using one of these as a banshee in my necropolis army. Okay, so just a few, you know, just to kind of show you. But that's all you got in Storm Strike was you got four of these, you got three of these, you got this guy. For some reason, you got two of these, and you got four of these. One of them's a, a musician. That's it. No heroes, no nothing. Like you could have foregone one of these guys and put in, you know, somebody like this as a hero instead of this guy. You don't, you don't need this guy. I mean, he's... I mean, he doesn't do anything. You needed a hero, not this. You see what I'm saying? It's not... This is, this is something that Games Workshop has been doing for a while. And it's, and it's something that I think people are now starting to pick up on. And so they're kind of looking at it and they're going, oh, well, you know, I mean, they had, you know, well, their games workshop, you know, they're, they're premium, you know, people, they, they do, well, no, they don't always do the right thing. Okay. They're, they're not always the best at what they do. Okay. And that's not to say the games workshop doesn't make good products. They do. It's, I think, 
that in the mad rush um, that was end times, <laughs> that was an absolute failure. I, I think they realized that they needed to go back and make a range refresh. So they ended up doing something that ended up hurting people. Okay. Really, really hurting people. And so it just, it just goes to show that Games Workshop isn't always, you know, the best at what they do. Um, now, I painted up um, a huge range. Uh-oh. That's it's not good. I don't know. So at the time, because I was building a Bretonia army, I built in... I built up some Bretonian figures. Okay, so I have a little. Um, this is a Bretonian lord. Um, this was going to kind of be one of my generals in my army. Okay, and you can see that I painted it with a symbol on the side, and um, I he had a different because he's like a he's like a duke of a different province, but because I was using him for my army, and I wanted to kind of like make him more about my you know my guy and my army i painted the symbol on it but then i painted him in the same color scheme as the rest of the army what's interesting is is that i actually went in and painted like certain parts of the miniature in blue and red because blue and red are kind of the, the king's colors okay um and i painted an absolute crap ton of figures um at the time that I was doing some of this stuff because, you know, and I had, I had painted up, um, some horses, um, that I was going to use for Knights Errant and Knights of the Realm and, you know, some various things like that because I had some, you know, some characters that I was building, you know, like here's one of them. And the interesting thing is you probably noticed that I switched over to this box this Battle Masters, um, I, number one, I like the artwork on it. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Um, but number two, it's because Battle Masters is where I got a lot of these figures. So, like, this was actually, like, the champion of my Knights Errant was this dude right here. See? And, um, and so I had, um, and then one of the guys, oh, yeah. One of the guys I painted up, um, I put like a little M. Oh, here he is. Yeah, this guy. I, I painted, it's kind of hard to see, but I painted like a little M um, on his thing. Because you're supposed to have a, a standard bearer, and then you're supposed to have a musician in each one. And so I made him my musician, and I painted an M on his... Uh, on his thing, and then, like, this guy was the champion slash standard bearer of my arm of my Knights of the Realm, <laughs> um, because you know you could do things like that. And then I have, and uh, let's see if I can pull these up here. Uh, I basically <clears throat> purchased like a whole bunch of different um, figures and stuff. And I ended up buying a bunch of Bretonian um, men at arms and I bought like a lot of things. And like, here's a, this is an actual uh, Bretonian Lord on foot. Um, and so I took him and painted him up and um, he's got a Warhammer. And, um, and, and you can kind of see that I painted the fleur-de-lis in gold and then each of the gems, I, I don't know if you can kind of see that, but each of the gems on there is a different color. One is red, one is blue, and then one is purple. And I, I meant that as like, you know, because he's, you know, subscribing to, you know, Bretonia and all that kind of stuff. There's, you know, there's that. Um, and then I have a, um... 
this is um, actually one of the uh, elven warlord uh, figures. Um, she's uh, like a magic user and stuff like that. I was going to use her as um, Alariel of the High Elves um, before she came into her full aspect. And then Alariel gets a um, uh, gets a, um, a bodyguard who has a, a spear. And so that was her body. That was going to be her bodyguard <laughs> with the spear. Um, and then I have like. This was actually an Empire uh, State Troop that I painted up as a Men-at-Arms and a Standard Bearer. Um, and then I had, um, like, here's the musician right there. Um, so I had a, a bunch of guys that I was going to paint up. Oh, and then this was, um, yeah, this was a different one that I painted up. I, I didn't know what I was going to use her for. Um, I, I just kind of painted a bunch of random figures and kind of threw them in there and was like, here you go. <laughs> here, be part of my army. Be part of my army. <laughs> um, I actually uh, bought some Wood Elves, um, Glade Guards, and um, I had uh, painted some up because I was going to use them in my army, but I ended up not. I ended up putting most of them in my Elven army for Warlord. <laughs> Um, this was a Reaper, um, metal mini, and, uh, she has, um, and she was going to be a damsel. And then what I was, um, going to do with her was, um, I had purchased, um, a, uh, I'm not even sure why or how, but I purchased a unicorn. So I painted up the unicorn, and that was going to be my damsel's, like, mount, or, like, familiar kind of thing. Um, because you could you could have that in, in certain aspects of armies and, and various things like that. So, anyway, I just kind of wanted to show off some of, some of those miniatures and, and some of those things, because it was, it was kind of interesting. Um, I had, you know, painted up a bunch of stuff, and I was just... Kind of at the time, just kind of sitting there thinking, you know, what am I, what am I going to do with some of this stuff? Like, how am I going to make some of this stuff work? You know, what am I going to do with it? How am I going to do things with it? And so it just kind of became a project that I just kind of sat down and started working on. And um, so, you know, and, and, it, and because of Age of Sigmar, it kind of went on hold because I just was like, do I really, you know, need to keep on trying to play a game that is essentially nobody plays around my area? And none of my friends play it. So I just stopped playing it. And that's why I'm saying that, like, I bought a bunch of the sets because I was, I was hoping that maybe, you know, some of my friends would start playing or, you know, doing something. But then when I discovered Warlord, I was like, um, <laughs> Warlord's much better. <laughs> no offense to Games Workshop, but Warlord is so much better because you can do so much more with that than you can with any other miniatures game. Why would I not want to play Warlord? And so I just kind of wanted to explain my my rants and I just kind of wanted to explain why that video was that way and just kind of you know show off some of the stuff that you know I was talking about some of the figures and some of the different things that I was talking about with the box set so I hope that makes it a little bit more clear so right now, um, what I'm doing with this Reptus Warrior is um, I'm painting Lead Belcher onto his sword because we are going to um, paint the sword. Um, we're going to paint some of the armor. We're going to paint some of the stuff um, today. And then if we have time, 
Um, and the second part will probably end up um, doing um, some of the shading and, and highlighting and stuff like that of the mini. So we'll see what we get to today. Um, like I said, I know I spent like 17 minutes kind of talking about some of that stuff. But I think it was important just to kind of like give context to what I was talking about during the episode and like how, you know, I was like building this army and then Age of Sigmar came out and then all this other stuff has happened. And yeah, I just, I just think that Warlord is a superior miniatures game just because it's much easier to actually buy into and play than Age of Sigmar. And like I said, that's not to say that, you know, if you don't play, I mean, if you play Age of Sigmar, good for you. you know, have fun. But it's not necessary. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that, you know, to kind of lend some credence to what I was talking about before, you don't get any heroes in the Storm Strike set, and that kind of makes it worthless in terms of trying to play <laughs> because it's like um oh okay so i buy this box set for you know 40 bucks or you know 80 bucks and then i have to spend you know upwards of you know 75 dollars to buy a bunch of minis that are necessary to play the game thanks I think. Not really. And I guess my, my point is, you know, we've, we as gamers have kind of allowed that to be the sort of the norm because we pay those prices at Games Workshop and we don't force them to come down to us. We go to them. It's because, and this is something that a lot of people have told me over the years, the hobby. That's what Games Workshop is about, the hobby. The buying and painting and everything of the miniatures, that's, that's what they create, is the hobby. That's what they want you to be a part of. It's like, well, I don't have a problem being a part of the hobby as long as the hobby doesn't take every cent I make. And I'm sorry, but that's kind of where we are at, folks, with miniatures games now. It's like, they are so darn expensive. And, you know, if you want to make a product that gets people into your miniatures game, then make it so that it gets people into your miniatures game. Don't make it so that you go, Oh, by the way, and, and I didn't mention this in the last one, but like there was also a lot where it was like, oh, um, if you have any questions or if you need any clarifications on the rules, go buy the core rule book and look at page five and six. This will clarify everything for you. I mean, they're not absolutely saying that you have to go out and buy the rule book, but they're basically saying that you that you know that if if a situation arises and you can't solve it then you need to buy the rule book. Well, the rule book's, you know, 70 bucks. I mean, why would I need to buy something that, that expensive when I can get the rules for free off your website? I mean, maybe not anymore, but before I could. And like I said, I'm not saying that you can't buy and play Games Workshop stuff. If you want, do it. I'm just saying that this is something that we as gamers have allowed to just manifest and continue to perpetuate, and it's burgeoned out into other companies now. And it's not just Games Workshop being Games Workshop. It's every single miniatures game on the market doing the same thing that Games Workshop is doing because we allowed Games Workshop to gouge everybody 
on these prices and on these things, and we haven't stood up and said, no, that's not cool, Games Workshop. Don't do that. And I think that now people are starting to realize with this Cursed City expansion where it's like, oh, hey, by the way, you know, you, you, you buy the, you buy the expansion for, you know, 35 pounds or about 50 bucks. And, um, you know, oh, and then, you know, you need to buy all these miniatures on top of that for a whole bunch more. You know, you have to buy these seven necessary miniatures and they didn't include any cardboard tokens in the box. So you either have to buy miniatures that represent those figures or you have to pay the 126 pounds or 150 bucks to purchase those miniatures from Games Workshop. So that's that was kind of my point is that you know, and it's like, and it's not something that it was unique to Cursed City, because it's something that Games Workshop has been doing since they released this set, the Curse, the the Stormstrike set, okay, and they started doing this, and they're and they're perpetuating it to the point where now we as gamers are kind of sitting back and going, oh, it's normal. It shouldn't be normal. <laughs> Okay? It really shouldn't. We should not have normalized this. We should not have said, this is go, this is so good. No, we should have said, no, this is bad. Bad Games Workshop. Don't ever do that again. Because if we, the gamers, had stood up and said that, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Games Workshop would have, would have likely, you know, done stuff that that would have fixed that in a way but we didn't we just sat back and said nothing and so games workshop was like oh well we got away with it once let's do it again oh, we got away with it again let's keep on doing it oh now the community's all yelling and screaming about it too late you didn't care about it then what makes you think we care about you now So I'm just finishing up putting on um, some armor. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of throw on a little bit more here and then call it for this half of the episode and then um, when we get back we will um, kind of finish putting on the uh, the armor colors and we will start looking at um, the cleanup stage where we will kind of look at cleaning up some of the uh, some of the armor spillover, some of the other spillovers and that kind of stuff, and then we'll just kind of go from there.
I'm going to kind of vary some of the colors on this miniature um, just because I want it to be um, I want it to be kind of colorful. I don't want it to be just like one basic, like two basic colors or one basic color and then there's like a highlight color. I want it to look, um, you know, pretty unique in terms of some of that aesthetic. And so I'm kind of like painting certain parts of him with the lead belcher and then what I'll do is, is I'll come back with a different color and then do some highlights later but because I'm gonna we're gonna shade the guy and then we'll come back and you know kind of finish doing some of that Hard to know if you're getting everything right or wrong. Because <laughs> it's deep in shadow and you can't really see. But it's not that big of a deal. Alright, so as you can see, that's what we've done so far. So when we come back, um, I'm going to kind of go in and we'll we'll cover um, some of the parts in gold. And then um, from that, we will continue forward on into, um, you know, some of the various, like, highlights and shading. We'll do some shading and then we'll do some highlights and stuff. Um, because, you know, like I said, we'll have to do some cleanup. We'll have to do a few things here and there. And then we'll get it done. So... I'll see you in less than a second. Welcome back. For you, that was less than a second. For me, it's been an hour or two. <laughs> oh, not that it matters. I was just kind of doing some things. So one of the things that I did was um, I have some of these Battlemasters figures, and um, I didn't have any cavalry bases, so I cut my own. I don't know how well it's going to work yet, um, because I'm going to let the glue dry, because I glued him in. So I'm going to let the glue dry, and then after it dries, I'm going to paint, I'm going to cover the whole base in Mod Podge. And then I'm going to um, come back, and that way I can paint the whole thing. Um, and my, my goal is, if I can build a few of them, is to have some warg riders for loader because the scale is just about right for lord of the rings so that's the plan we'll see if it works <laughs> but uh but yeah um and then i put my uh, skeletons on their bases i'm letting them dry and we're gonna kind of move on and we're gonna keep on going here so I have my um, Emperor's Gold color, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to paint um, a lot of these um, interior pauldrons, these interior um, crevices and stuff, gold, because um, I think that would look cool. And then when we get done, we'll come back and we'll put the green kind of as a trim, if you know what I mean. So I'll, I'll do this part, and then I'll show you what I mean by that. And then I'll show you what parts we're going to uh, paint green, basically. But we've got to be messy and get the paint down inside the, the parts first. Otherwise, it doesn't look good because we'll be trying to put paint where there's paint already. So you always want to start with the craziest stuff and work your way out. So we're doing that, okay? And then these raised areas on the inside of it, okay, and then this, this part around the edge will all be trimmed green, okay? 
this part right here, this little shoulder pad here, I'm going to paint all gold. Because I think it'll look cool that way. And then, um, and then there's like a little design here as well that will get painted green once the paint's dry. And we're going to kind of do the same thing with these little things on the front. Is we're going to paint these things, and then when we when they are dry, we will paint. Um, over them. But you kind of have to get everything painted first, okay? That's kind of the whole deal is you need to get everything painted gold first. Then you can come back and get all the detail work, especially after we get done shading and highlighting. So when I said I had a pile of shame in one of my earlier paint tutorial videos, if I, you know, I told you, I said, hey, if you want to see my pile of shame, yeah, I have a huge pile of shame. Absolutely gigantic pile of shame. Because I have things all over. That could be painted, but I haven't even gotten around to. something a little different because I think it'll look cool I don't know but we'll try so <clears throat> this is antique copper okay I featured it once before on the channel um I bought this paint a little while back um from Walmart and it's a folk art metallic okay and uh I wanted something that was more of a coppery color to have as a foil for, you know, instead of just having so much gold all the time, having something that was more uh, doled down, you know what I mean? So it's not just everything is gold, it's, you know, I have, or everything is steel, or everything is some other color, it's... No, it's this this color I can have this like kind of an antique bronze color, antique copper color that has a much different shade to it.
I kind of think of these guys as having, you know, they're not complete savages, even though some of the, uh, some of the factions might not agree since they eat, you know, like people and children and stuff like that. Because, I mean, what do they know? They're, they're just subsisting. I mean, they're just, they're just getting their stuff, right? Just getting their nutrients. Were you to say otherwise? sure what these are for. I'm just going to cover them bronze. Just for the hell of it. Okay. Um, and then, meh, why not? I'm going to cover this one bronze in here. It'll look different. It might be a sign of something. Like, oh, you are just a warrior versus someone else. Kind of like what I did with my, uh, my other ones. But, you know, I mean, you can do it however you want. <laughs> yours is yours. You do it how you like. Alright. I may use some of this new or midnight brew. Just a little bit. Why not? And I'll show you what I've done. Come on. Come on. All right. So as you can see what I've done, I've colored in the gold in the recesses, and then I've colored this gold, this gold, and then this is blue right here in the front, and then this is gold, and then this is the antique bronze here, and then this part down here is blue, and then I colored the little icon on his belt blue. It's hard to see. And then I colored the hilt of the sword. Um and the antique bronze so it looks it looks pretty good i mean i i really um i really like that color it's not as bright as my other um blue metallic so it's a little bit different and we've got one more color to put on actually we've got a few more colors to put on before we start Shading. All right, son. Let's get you done.
think I'll wait to do anything with the green metallic on the inside until after we get done shading and highlighting. This is going to make it that much easier to, to uh, make nice and bright. It's bright now, but once we shade it, it'll it'll dull down a lot. So we probably don't want to do too much to it right this minute. Best thing to do is get the outsides and then get the rest after we get done with the with the shade. This guy's studded with a lot of details, so there's going to be a lot here for you to paint. So just know that. I think you can kind of see where I'm getting a lot of this um, detail in. It's, um, there's a lot of these little plates everywhere that are sticking out. And so when you, when you get them, you pay attention to where the details are and what those details are because there's there might be stuff on the top as well as stuff on the sides as well as stuff around I mean it's there's a lot so you just want to be careful when you're doing this kind of stuff it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, as long as it's decent, it looks good, then that's what you want, but you get it to a place where you're happy. That's how I look at it. Okay. 
lots of crusty details. And don't be concerned if you make a couple mistakes, like if you hit um, certain parts of it and you're like, oh crap, you know, what was I doing? I wouldn't worry about it, mostly because it's it's gonna get covered up when we hit the shade on it, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Get what you need and move on. But you also want to make sure that because some of these are a little transparent. Um, you want to make sure that you get enough paint that it covers everything, but not so little that it that it looks bad. Okay. Okay, I think that's everything for now. The rest of it we'll get when we get shade. Okay, now comes the hard part. So if you're wondering, I, I noticed a lot of times because my camera is right here, okay, that when I would go to wash my brush, you can see how big my hand is. And so it's like I have my arm like all the way across the frame and it's so I decided that it's easier just to kind of come over the top, and sometimes you'll see my arm kind of droop down a little bit and then in frame. But I try to make sure that I'm up over the top so that I don't get, so I'm not just, you know, it's like blocking out whole things. So if you want to, you know, super paying attention to the miniature and you're trying to look at it, and you're, get your flipping hand out of the way, man. What are you doing? <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Right now I'm getting the straps around his um, uh, thing here, around the wrist guards. There is a belt, so you need to pay attention to that. And again, if you get some paint where you don't want it, just you can go back and try to touch it up, or you can just hit it with the shade later and not worry about it. That's what I'm gonna do. Because there's a couple places where I kind of hit the shade, and I'm like, ah, dad, burn it. What am I doing? But then I remembered, eh, it's not gonna matter anyway here in a minute because I'm gonna shade the freaking thing like hell, and nobody's gonna know. Here we go. That's a little bit of flash in there, but it's no big deal. All right. Now, when I get done with this board, I will show you what I have done so far. Almost to that point. Again, like I said, when we get done shading it, it will look a lot better. Because these are just base layers, not what we're actually be doing with our whole thing. Okay. 
So as you can see, I've trimmed most of this stuff in green, okay? And I've got, I got his belt. I know you can't really see it, but I also got these parts back here on the back sides, okay? And then I got these, this up here, okay? So you want to pay attention to, like, where are the leather straps? Where are, you know, certain things? And you want to make sure that when you're doing stuff like that, that you have, um, you know, some some good variation. Now, I just got to figure out what I'm going to color that skirt. I think what I'll do is, since it's the Kingdom of Jade, and since we're doing a little bit of a, you know, kind of a funky, cheeky thing, So as of filming this, I, I, I have edited my um, I, I've edited the other two episodes of this and they will be up. Um, you know by the time this one's up, they will have been up for a while but um, but basically they're gonna go up tomorrow as of filming this. and um, and so I, I try to, when I film th certain things, I, I try to make sure that I keep a steady upload schedule of it, so that people don't like go, "Well, gee, he just doesn't he just doesn't put anything out." What's he do? No, I'm a little busy with other things in my life, and so I don't have a regular upload schedule. But I try to upload on Sundays, um, because that's when. I'm with my folks, and I'm at their house, and so I'm using a Wi-Fi to upload. Because I don't have Wi-Fi here in my apartment when I'm filming this, so I have to, I have to basically like either walk over to my apartment common room and use the Wi-Fi there, or I. Um, Or I just do it at my parents' house, and I just find that it's easier just to do it at my parents' house because then I then I just go and do because it's just easy to upload because I'm already there. Might as well, right? But I spend Sunday with my folks. Yes, I'm a good son. Mostly because I'm the only one that my parents have around here. <laughs> My brother and sister-in-law are on the other side of the mountains from where I live, and then so and they're busy because they've got two kids and they've got their lives to live, and yeah, so they're busy. So I'm, I pretty much told my parents, I said, well, if you guys want to, you know, hang out and do stuff and talk, and <laughs> well, let's do that. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is <clears throat> we're going to shade. And this shading job is going to be very, very strange because we're going to be kind of like we're going to use one shade for a little bit, then we're going to switch to a different shade, then we're going to go back to another shade, then we're going to go to a different shade. Um, because what we want is there's a lot of like detail that you can kind of see on the model. I mean, there's a ton of detail on this model. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to paint this thing. Um, and you'll notice that I haven't painted anything like the, the feet or the, the uh, fingernails or his teeth or anything like that, because I'm going to get that during the highlight stages and like as we're doing some things. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to kind of show you. So the, the Colia green shade is going to go over all of the green parts. So it's going to go over all of his skin. It's going to go on his little um, skirt. It's going to go on his tail. It's going to go on his feet and his legs. Um, and when I get to the highlight stages, I'll show you what I'm going to do. And then the Seraphim Sepia is going to go on everything that's gold or bronze or anything like that. And then the Nuln Oil will go on the sword 
and on his normal, like, metallic parts, okay? Then once we get done and that shade has dried, okay, um, then what what's going to end up happening is, is that then we're going to go back and we're going to start building the colors back up. So we're going to come back in with the thicket. We're going to... Um, we're going to slowly build the skin tone back out. Then from the, um, then from that, we'll go to the, the holly branch and then we will end up, um, with the foliage, um, kind of on the very, very tips, um, of like, cause you can kind of see here that his head has a lot of like scales on it and, if you can kind of, I don't know if you can kind of see his leg there, but like his legs have a lot of like little bumps and detail. It's really hard to see, but there's a lot of bumps and detail and stuff. And like his muscles kind of bulge and his fingers have like little protrusions on them where like the joints are. So when we get done, he's going to look like he's going to have a lot of like He's going to have dark areas, but then he's going to have, like, a lot of light areas up on his knuckles and, like, on his muscles and various different things. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to call it there. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and apply the shade. Um, when I come back, I will show you what the model looks like with the shade on it. It, it will be very, very dark, okay? And so, you know, that's, that's going to be, you know, a, a thing that, that happens. So... I'm going to do that off camera just because I think it's going to be a lot easier for me just to get it all down. And then once we come back, then I can do that. So smash that like button, hit subscribe, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think of the paint, um, uh, painting tutorial so far. Um, let me know what you think. Um, if you want to see more of me making these type of bases and doing that type of stuff, um, I have a whole bunch of new things to paint. Um, I actually put this guy onto a base. Um, he's a beastman from this game. Um, in fact, I think, like, right here you can see the wolf riders. And these are the beastmen right here, okay, with the horns. And then you've got some chaos and stuff like that. This was actually to get people into Warhammer. And the funny thing is, there's no, like, regular champion guy. <laughs> I think this is supposed to represent, like, the Imperial player. It's like, yeah, I'm the general. <laughs> I'm going to smash you. Um, and then there's, like, the tower and stuff like that. Um, I, I don't know if I featured that on the channel, but I have, because I have a couple of different towers. Um, I have one here. It's in pieces because I'm painting it. But, like, this is the tower. And it basically goes together like this. Okay, and then there's like a staircase, and there's like, you know, a little protrusion on that side. There's like a little dormer window on this side. And then there's like a little um, topper that goes up on top that the units in the game actually um, sit on top of, and they can actually shoot off of. So you can, I don't know if you can kind of see it in the background, but like there's like little guys in between little crenellations. So, you know, I mean, it, it's just stuff like that. Um, so if you want to see me do more um, of, like, some scenery painting, if you want to see more of other miniatures other than just the Reaper, um, if you want to see some Games Workshop stuff, I've got, again, I've got a ton of stuff to paint, I, I just haven't gotten around to it, because I've been doing other things, so, like I said, I've got a huge pile of shame, okay, and, um, so, you know, if you want to see my pile of shame, link, you know, link down below, um, this guy, I, I brought him out again. Um, I, I meant to show him off, but I didn't. He's an actual Onyx Legion soldier. I actually bought him thinking that he was um, a, uh, a soldier. This is for the Overlords. Um, I bought him thinking that he was for um, the uh, Crusaders. And I started painting him. I'm like, I'm like, that's not a Crusader symbol. What the hell, man? And so I was looking through. I, I, I was, you know, doing some stuff you know, a, a while back, and I went, he's an Onyx Legion soldier. <laughs> so I need to paint him up in some darker colors. So if you want to see that too, um, because again, like I said, I'm using her for um, Lola Darkslip, 
And so, you know, she's going to be fun to paint because, I, I mean, her base has a lot of detail on it, a lot of, like, little things. Um, so I thought that might be kind of fun to uh, to paint that, too. So if you want to see some of those things, drop a comment below. Um, we will be getting back to this guy. Um, he's now dry. You can kind of see where um, all the colors have really dulled down. Um, and we have to go in and, and do a few things. I still have to paint his, um, his little, uh, van braces here, but other than that, um, yeah, he's ready to go. So I just need to go back and just kind of lighten him up in certain ways. And, um, yeah, and he'll be pretty much done. I mean, we don't have too much to do and then we've got to do his base. Um, his base is really kind of crazy, but yeah, so we'll get back to him, um, probably on the next one. And so we'll go from there. So as I always,